Good day, everyone. Dr. Randall Gates, board certified chiropractic neurologist, also a chiropractic physician at Gates Brain Health. Today, I'm talking about mast cell activation syndrome and nausea. So that's the title of today. Um, trying to continue the series on mast cells. The more we learn about it, uh, the more I think we're able to help people collectively. As I've said in other videos, I'm learning with you. Honestly, any doctor in this field has to be because mast cell biology is uh, something, as Dr. Afrin says, doctors get about one minute of. Um, and we're only, I think, beginning to scratch the surface on how important mast cells are to chronic illness. What are mast cells? Mast cells are a type of immune cell. We have many different types of immune cells, um, <clears throat> different types of white blood cells. Uh, given the uh, the infection that's been going on for the last two years, we're aware of B cell memory and T cell. Mast cells are a type of immune cell typically associated with allergy disorders, asthma, hives, rashes. And if you take antihistamines, that's affecting mast cell biology, basically. Um, but we now know that mast cells are far more complicated than just histamine function. And... Um, and we're learning that they not only affect allergic symptoms, but they affect a lot of chronic illness symptoms. So without further ado, and good morning to everyone who's joined. Um, this video is not medical advice. Consult your doctor. These are just ideas, suggestions for discussion uh, concepts. So, okay. Uh, the main article that I'm citing today is out of uh, BMC Gastroenterology. Uh, cross-sectional study of nausea and functional abdominal pain relation to mucosal mast cells and psychological functioning. So um, these researchers are really good. I believe they're out of Kansas City and the uh, broadcast they did on headaches and mast cell density as it relates to kids who have stomach pain and headaches, uh, they found increased mast cells in a portion of their small intestine. The same group keeps kind of exploring different symptoms as it relates to mast cells. And because they're gastroenterologists, they're dealing with people who have stomach pain or irritable bowel syndrome. So they're examining these relationships. Um, hide that. Bring this in again. Good morning to everyone. Uh, so nausea is common to both IBS and functional dyspepsia. Functional dyspepsia is more like people who have stomach pain they may have early satiety, um, meaning they eat and they get full early. Um, they may have some acid reflux. Irritable bowel syndrome are individuals who have may have alternating constipation, diarrhea. Their symptoms can be relieved with having a bowel movement, and uh, they may have pain, bloating, things of that nature. Uh, the criteria keeps changing on it. We used to have the ROM three, now we have the ROM four. But anyways, those are the generalities of the two conditions. So nausea is common to both of these conditions. Nausea sufferers demonstrate increased mast cell densities in their duodenum. So they looked at all these symptoms and actually I'll hide this one and I'll bring this one in. So they looked at all the symptoms and they looked throughout the gastrointestinal tract and what they found is that those who had nausea had a significantly increased, and I actually have to do it this way, this 0.02, anything below 0.05 on your p-value is statistically clinically significant. So what they found is that, see this 0.02 in the lower right corner, um, that work, no, still work, okay. In essence, they found increased mast cells in the duodenum of those who have nausea. So potentially, this is a correlation, but is the increased mast cell density what's creating the nausea? Because we know the mast cells release things like histamines. And we know one of the com most common medications for treating functional dyspepsia, stomach pain, nausea is something that's in a histamine blocker. So, uh, yeah, famotidine. So those who take Pepsid AC are working on their mast cells to reduce histamine function that can help with symptoms of nausea. So now as we take a step back, we can start to say, da, da, da. we can start to say that um, those who have stomach issues and headaches, we know they have increased mast cells in their duodenum. 
We now know the exact mechanism for those who have food intolerances, who how that develops. We know that an infectious trigger will actually break down the gut lining, activate mast cells to then develop food allergies. And that can be a source of irritable bowel syndrome and ongoing food intolerances. Now here we see that those who are suffering with nausea, at least in this pediatric population, that they have increased mast cells in their duodenum. So I think we need to start paying attention because when we start to see these correlations, uh, there may be something going on. And my next broadcast, I was gonna try and do it today, but just ran out of time. Uh, I'm going to talk about mast cells and headaches in a little more detail. Um, what this means for you is that everybody's gonna think of the simple solution, you know, should I take antihistamines? Should I take more antihistamines? I mean, that's where the medical field is gonna go. What I will say, what I see functionally is that finding the right foods for the individual, being really precise about that, using certain supplements potentially to aim to stabilize mast cell function in conjunction with a medication-based approach if that is needed. Uh, that's what I'm seeing to be effective at this point in time. So um, I think that's pretty much it. I hope all of you enjoyed it. Let me know your comments and questions and have a good Saturday and I will be back next week. Okay, bye-bye.